It's quiet on the savannas along the lower reaches of the Congo River. Much too quiet. Where once large herds came to drink at watering holes, there is now little sign of life. The large African fauna have disappeared. They fell victim to merciless hunting. Biologist Manar Umbende and his colleagues from the WWF Environmental Organization are doing research in this deserted grassland. They're assessing how much biomass and biodiversity still exist in the Congo Basin. Even the smallest signs of life are important. Antelope hoof prints in the mud, for example. Each detail is carefully measured. We're doing a kind of inventory of the fauna here. There used to be animals like elephants and lions, so we're seeing what's still here and what isn't. Data are also collected from the air. An airplane flies over carefully chosen areas in the Congo Basin. On board is a LIDAR system, a laser that scans the ground. The data it delivers can be analyzed to determine the condition of the forest, whether it's still intact or has been damaged by clear-cutting or grazing. The result is a three-dimensional map that indicates tree height, buildings, roads, and open areas. Those data are then used to calculate how much carbon dioxide the region can absorb. The Congo Basin is nearly as large as Western Europe. It will take many months for all the data to be gathered and analyzed. But they then will be worth money, according to Elvis Chibasu from WWF. It's an important opportunity for the Democratic Republic of the Congo in regard to preserving the forest and in preparation for future trading with CO2 certificates. The environmentalists hope that if money from emissions trading starts to flow in the region, protecting the forest would be worth more than destroying it. But it's a long way until that point is reached, and time is running out. In order to provide fuel for the rapidly growing population, large swathes of forest are turned into charcoal, which is loaded on trucks and then shipped to cities. Aurelie Shapiro heads the project to assess biomass along the Congo with the LIDAR laser surveying system. She says the aircraft isn't enough. The measuring really needs to be done from space. So we're using satellite imagery to complement the airborne LIDAR data to effectively view the entire country in one image from space to be able to see all of the forests at once. And that view is cause for concern. Satellite expert Eddie Bongwele says large parts of the Congo Basin are still forested, but the rainforest is shrinking. To get this map, we processed 8,000 satellite images from NASA, and we have um, def def deforestation around big cities uh, where we can see in Kisangani, and we have also deforestation in the eastern part of Congo where we had a um, conflict in the past. War and corruption are the biggest threats to the forest, and there has been plenty of both in the Congo Basin. Meanwhile, Menar Mabende and his WWF team continue to gather data about the plant and animal world. It's hard work, and it's hot out here. Here, we're in the tree savanna. Down on the river, there's riparian forest. We're now going to the forest to collect further data about the biodiversity, the flora and biomass there. The counting is done within a precisely measured area. The researchers extrapolate that data about biomass to the entire forest. This is our predetermined area, in which we examine the height of the trees, their circumference, and the color of the wood. We examine the entire biosphere, and then compare that data with what comes from the LIDAR. Here, the forest is still intact, and there's a lot of biomass. That's good for the carbon dioxide footprint. But what the researchers are not finding is animals. 
This forest is as empty as the savanna that surrounds it. Its former residents have long since disappeared to the meat markets of the cities. <laughs> 